So here we are again for another discussion on how we can be more inclusive to children with special needs. And today I really want to talk about working with younger kids who have autism. That's something that we see a lot of in our clinic where they're either newly diagnosed or they're just little kids who have have not had a lot of exposure playing with other children, Mm -hmm. being with people outside of their home, and trying to figure out strategies for engaging them. So we're going to talk to Michelle today, who is an instructor in our autism program where they work with children between the ages of zero and three and really helping them learn how to play and interact with others. So welcome. Hi. So I'm wondering what is um, a good way just starting out. So your first time meeting a child, mm-hmm. they're coming to the environment for the first time. They might be a little bit anxious mm-hmm. or a little aloof. Do you have any strategies that you find are consistently helpful for those kids? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the the first thing that I do when I work with um, kids with special needs, it, uh, I tend to focus on the relationship and build the trust first. Um, And that really involves following the child's lead and seeing what they're interested in. So I throw my agenda out the window, I throw what my expectations are um, out the window and I just wanna see what they like. So if we have, you know, toys um, around the classroom, I just wanna see what they go to and what they play with, how they play with the toys and, um, you know, really just observe what they like first uh, before I really, you know, jump in and work with them. Yeah, I love that. There's a saying with with kids, but I think it applies to all relationships that you have to connect before mm-hmm. you can direct. Mm-hmm. And I think we forget that connection piece yeah. and we just want to go straight to telling kids what to do. Mm-hmm. But especially for kids on the spectrum, it's so important to connect to them. Are there toys that you find or activities that a lot of kids with autism tend to like? Yeah. So um, in my experience working with kids with autism, a lot of kids really like uh, cars they that's a really popular one with boys they like to watch the wheel spin and mm-hmm. that's very um, you know stimulating to them um, a lot of kids really like balls puzzles letters numbers that tends to be um, a hit with a mm-hmm. large like a large majority of the kids I've worked with so those are good activities mm-hmm. to have at the ready yes mm-hmm. and then so you're watching the child and they're approaching let's say they're approaching the cars mm-hmm. and they're going to the cars and they're watching the wheels spin mm-hmm. what do you do next yeah so then I want to join them in their world so their play is unique to them and that is you know satisfying to them so even if it doesn't you know feel like play to us we want to join into their world so they feel like we're trying to make a connection with them so if the child is is turning the car upside down and spinning the wheels and i'm going to take my own car and i'm going to turn it upside down and spin the wheel next to them Mm -hmm. so that is my way of joining their world to start to build that connection with them yeah i think that when we see kids playing in a way that's different than what Mm -hmm. we expect. We think it's not play Mm -hmm. because it looks a little weird, but you're so right to them. It's play. Mm -hmm. And so who are we to say what's play and what's not, you know, maybe I love to ride my bike, but you hate riding a bike. Everybody has their own preferences Mm -hmm. and all preferences are okay. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of figuring out how to connect with the child. Mm -hmm. And then once you've made that connection where they, they notice you're there, they're Mm -hmm. looking at your car too, or maybe mm-hmm. they're showing you your car, their car. Mm-hmm. What's the next step? Then you would, once you've gotten their attention, then you really want to use your affect, which is kind of your ability to, you know, use to express. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, like to express, yeah. it's like your expression, it's your playfulness. Yeah, you want to your, get your voice, yeah. the tone of voice. Yeah, so now you want to really use your playfulness to your advantage to draw the child in and get that engagement yeah. um, with that child. So th- af- let's say they, they realize, oh, this person next to me is also spinning wheels. Then you can start to um, make some sound effects in a really playful way. Or then you could start to, um, you know, model different things you can do with the car and see how the child responds. If the child is very interested in you, they're, they they want to be interested in what you're doing. And that's a really good 
building block for learning from you. Yeah. So you have to establish that connection and you have to establish that like, I like you feeling Mm -hmm. if you want to teach them anything because they're not just naturally going to say, teach me. Mm -hmm. You're, you're having to bridge that gap. And then Mm -hmm. once you get their attention, then they're in a position where you can teach them something new, like, oh, look, the car can go down the ramp Mm -hmm. or something like that. So it sounds like connection first Mm -hmm. and then trying to bridge them into the next step of play with what Mm -hmm. they're doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I'm I'm curious, so are there... Do, do all children love loud voices and big reactions and sound effects or how do kids respond? Every child is different. Um, each child has sensory preferences. So some kids will respond really well to high energy, you know, loud, very playful energy. But for some kids that makes them really anxious and they need someone to um, who's really calm and takes things slow. So um, in that way, you would also have to read the child and see how they respond. And if you find that you're giving really high energy um, playfulness and they start to withdraw, then you, I would recommend modifying your energy to bring it down to their level. Yeah, emotions are contagious mm-hmm. in a lot of people. And so if you want them to... Um, connect with you you really need to match their emotion Mm -hmm. level so sometimes like if they're if they're a high strung kid then you can be high strung to meet them Mm -hmm. and then slowly draw back a little bit to try to bring them down to a place Mm -hmm. where they're able to learn better or if they're really quiet and reserved if you go in loud and and crazy Mm -hmm. it's going to be intimidating but if you go in quiet and reserved Mm -hmm. and just share space with them then you can slowly ramp them up a little bit so they're in a better place for learning so trying Mm -hmm. to like match their activity level Mm -hmm. and their volume how much they're moving how much expression they're using Mm -hmm. and then um, bridge them into that just right level for learning Mm -hmm. yeah good okay and then any tips that you have if you have a child that is um just on the perimeter of the group doesn't Mm -hmm. really you know is maybe looking at the group is interested in the group Mm -hmm. but isn't really joining the group Mm -hmm. any thoughts on how you might be able to bridge them over to that um what we typically do is well we typically we typically the kids will find something that they like so while they're kind of like shopping around in the perimeter and and looking for things to do once they do find that toy that they really like then we'll bring it into um you know the center of the room where the other kids are and see if that will draw them Mm -hmm. into the group so you use the preferred object to kind of entice them we do that's where we'll that's what we try to do um and if not then we will use ourselves, you know, and see how they respond to different types of sensory input. So that might be like picking them up and giving them jumps up and down or giving them squishes, you know, deep pressure, um, things like that to see if that helps Mm -hmm. engage them. Mm -hmm. Um, So we trial different things to see what the child responds to. And then we build off of that. Yeah. So it sounds like In summary, Mm -hmm. the goal should be to first focus on connection with a child, Mm -hmm. finding what they like and imitating what they're doing, and then bridging them over into either learning new play skills Mm -hmm. or joining a peer group um, and doing that by using what they like, but then also by using your own energy level and your Mm -hmm. own interaction with them to kind of entice them in Mm -hmm. to interaction with you and others. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for having me.